Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Quilter's Apothecary. Today, I am doing a mini tutorial on marking tools. Um, now, I actually did a marking tool tutorial multiple years back, but we are doing an updated version because some of the products that I love are no longer available, such as the SoClean that I love so much. Um, but I found a product that I like just as well. So we're going to go over exactly what to use when we're marking quilts. Because when we do mark quilts, the one thing that I know is this, especially if you quilt for clients, you want to be very careful. I know a lot of times we want to try every new product that comes out on the market, and my rule of thumb with that is the same as using any type of technology. Give it a little time and make sure that they work out the bugs. That's exactly what I say. And I don't church hop with products. I don't like to try every new thing that comes out. Once I find something that's tried and true, I pretty much stick with it as long as it stays tried and true. So let's head over here, and I'm going to show you the products that I like to use. And then we'll go into why there are some products out there that I choose not to use. The first product that I want to talk about is a product I've been using for years, and it is the Blue Water Soluble Marks Be Gone. And you'll notice that it has a blue base with a white cap, and right on the barrel it says Marks Be Gone. That is a trademark Blue Water Soluble ink. There's a lot of Blue Water Soluble inks out there, but this is the one that I know and I trust. So number one, when you buy them, they come, of course, in a sealed package, and they're hanging on a shelf. Now, the thing is, they are hanging on a shelf, but they are sealed. So all of the ink is staying stable. Whenever this gets removed from the package, a lot of people have the tendency to put them in a cup and store them upside down or right side up in a cup. You don't want to do that because what will happen is very quickly this ink will dissipate. What I do instead, once I open up my Marks Be Gone and my, or any type of water-soluble pen or pen of any sort, is once I open it up from the package, it goes in a Ziploc bag and it is stored laying on its side. It is never stored up and down or upside down. You always want to store it in a baggie laying on its side. So keep that in mind. They will dissipate if you store them in an open cup like this. Um, I found they'll dissipate probably about 25% every month, month and a half that they're in that cup. And that's why so many people get frustrated that they don't last that long because they're storing, storing them inappropriately. Okay, so now the other thing is this. When I'm doing client quilts and I am going to be marking on anything light with this, I am not going to use, use, take a customer quilt and dunk it in water. I am not going to trust that they have um, pre-washed the dark fabrics, so I don't want to trust that there's not going to be any bleed into the light colors when I dunk a quilt into water. Um, so what I prefer to do is to use a product called the Blue Line Erase, and I use that in a syringe applicator because I don't want to spritz this all over my fabric when all I need is to get rid of a single line. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do that. So what I like to do with my blue line erase, rather than utilize the actual sprayer and spray it all over parts of the fabric that has no need for it, is I like to put it in one of our applicators. Now these are amazing. These last for years and years. Um, and they're refillable. And I also want to make sure that when you do use these, that you label it Blue Line Erase, because I use mine as well for oil. So I don't want to get them mixed up. So I make sure I use a Sharpie marker, not a dry erase, because that'll go away. And I go ahead and I then label the outside so that that way it's not going to be mixed up. And I don't just label one side. I go all the way around and I just put a few marks just to kind of remind me that, okay, that's my blue line erase because it has Sharpie marks on it. So now to refill this, I unscrew the top. And then this top part, we don't pull out the syringe section. It's actually a cork. So we pop the cork and now we have access. And then I use a little teeny funnel. I set the funnel right in the bottle. Then I just open up my blue line erase rather than use the sprayer. And I am going to 
Fill her up. There we go. Close it right up so we don't get into any spills. Get rid of my funnel. And again, I take my cork top and I pop it right back on there. And then I have the screw top. Make sure that that's in there nice and tight. And then I take the screw top and I tighten that down so it is nice and tight. And now you have a bunch of blue line erase that when you use it this way will last five to 10 times longer than if you actually use the spray bottle. Now I love the blue line erase because once I use it, and let me give a few uh, little tips. Um, number one, always test something. So, um, and number two, when I'm using a blue water soluble, I'm using a blue water soluble on a white or on a light, light cream or a really light, light yellow. If it's on anything with any sort of color, you need to pre-test the blue line erase to make sure that it's not going to leave a residue. And sometimes it's not about the blue line erase. Sometimes it's about the fabric and the sizing that they use in the fabric that will run us into trouble. So just so you know, always pre-test if it's anything with color. But I've rarely, if ever, had any trouble using it on plain white or a light cream. So now, let me set this aside. And here I have used it about 10 times. I made lines and have gotten rid of it over and over and over and over on this side of this white piece of, of high premium cotton. So whenever I pre-mark something, I would then quilt right on that line. And then once I finish quilting, even before I roll the fabric forward, I would go ahead, use my blue line erase in the syringe applicator, and I use very little, and I just go right on the line, and it goes away immediately. Now, what I love about the blue line erase is that it actually does not go into the batting layer and then migrate back up later like some of the things do. So when you do this, it's gone. Now there's a wet spot here, but once that dries, that's going to dry perfectly clear. Again, uh, this is pre-washed fabric, so you have to pay attention. If it was dirty white fabric that hadn't been washed or it has had a bunch of sizing, it might react with that sizing. So you always want to do just a little bit of a test. But I have never, if ever, had any trouble um, getting rid of the blue line erase with the, um, or getting rid of the uh, blue marks be gone with the blue line erase. Now, the one thing to remember as well is if I got rid of a line because I didn't mark it right, it has to dry completely before I go back and try to use my blue pen. Do you see how if I mark that, nothing shows up? Whereas, if I mark next to it, there's my blue line. Again, go like this, come down, and it's very little that I'm putting on here. So, be very careful. A lot of times what I'll see, and we'll get emails from people that used it on top, and then they, what they do is they get bleed through from their backing fabric. So, if you have a dark backing fabric, you're not going to sit here and put a ton on. We have a lot of people that'll put half of this bottle on. You can barely see that I've used any of this because you don't need a lot to put on there. And again, you have to be aware of what is underneath on the backing of your quilt so that that way you don't put so much on that it's going to go down, grab that color, and migrate back up to the top. You've got to be very careful of that. You don't need all that. You just need very little to get rid of it. So that is how I mark and get rid of my marks with on anything white or light with the blue marks be gone and I don't use the other colors I don't use the pinks or the yellows or any of those I find that the blue has worked best I have never had an issue um, with 
using this on anything except a fabric that isn't 100% cotton. And then I simply had to use my blue line erase twice. I quilted a polyester shower curtain and uh, didn't know that that's what it was. And I had to go over it twice with the blue line erase to get rid of it. Okay, so let's move on to if we are going to mark on colored fabric. What I want to show now is how I mark on anything that has any color. So colored fabric, whether it be very dark or even light pastel fabric, I use the same products. So I'm pretty limited on what products I use. I use what works and I don't try a bunch of new things. I kind of stick to the tried and true. Um, two of my favorite marking tools are of course the Bowen white chalk. Now a lot of you are going to find this and you're going to purchase the chalk that has the color chalk as well as the white chalk. Don't use that on your quilts. You only want to make sure that you use the white chalk Bowens and that's the ones that you use. Um, I, that way I've never had any trouble. If you're going to mark on white, then you would stick to the blue marks be gone like you saw earlier. So now to um, reiterate, the Bowen Wide is the one that I use about 70% of the time. It comes with a sharpener so that I can sharpen it to a nice point. And then, of course, it comes with the actual um, um, pen chamber or, or the chalk chamber along with a ton of refills of the chalk. And we actually sell the refills as well if you run out of the chalk itself. And then, of course, if I want a really thin, 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 fine line, then I will go ahead and I will use the Bowen Thin. And what that is, is it's like a retractable um, mechanical pencil, and it has a nice thin barrel. Now, the difference between the two is that this has a little bit of a wax base, so I use an eraser to get rid of that. Um, and, but it always comes out. I have never had an issue with these not coming out. Okay, so now the other thing is, of course, we have the eraser, which I prefer. It's only a couple bucks, and again, they last for years, as I have said earlier when we're talking about refilling the pens. So now what I want to do is let's look at this. If I'm going to mark something with the wide, I would simply go ahead and mark. I don't need to press too hard. And the other thing that I like about this is that when you mark with this, it stays there until you choose to wipe it away. So light brushing, friction, if I pre-mark and then load the quilt, I tend to mark while I'm loaded on the machine. But this stays until I choose to get rid of it. Now, um, again, I push this down and that pulls out the um, chalk itself, which I'm going to show. Um, here and just like this same thing I push out to um, release more of the chalk and let's take a minute here and I will show you exactly how I do the refills on both of those. A couple questions we get when people are using the Bowen chalk is how do I refill the chalk when they are empty? So for example for our Bowen fine line what I do is to release the chalk you simply push on the lid here and that releases it's like a clicker releases the chalk well the thing to know is this when you push it and hold it in the chalk comes right out so when I want to put that a new chalk in I hold this down and then very simply I would go ahead and let me get rid of that little bit get your chalk they all come with a refill and you can purchase the refills from quiltersapothecary.com. And while I have it pushed in, I'm going to go ahead and I'm doing this far away so my glasses aren't in. Slide it in with that open. And now I push it right up. And it is now refilled. Okay? So that is how you fill that one. It's exactly the same thing with the other Bowen the wide chalk. So I grab a hold, I push in this, which is what you would use to release the chalk so that the more chalk will come out. And as it's coming out, you see these little openers, they open and close. And so when I want to grab a new chalk, 
from my refill and we also carry the refills even though you get a nice nice grouping of refills to begin with you slide it in and you do that and remember it does come with a sharpener you just want to remember when you want to sharpen the tip you make sure to take this out a little further than when you're going to actually use it and you slide in your chalk gently and then you set and you shave off the edge until you get the sharpness that you want on the tip and that is how you use that now of course the eraser that we have here I use the bone eraser and it's a nice white so that way nothing's gonna go onto your fabric you're not going to use a pink eraser or a kneaded eraser because that could transfer and stain your fabric and then I have been using this one for probably about a year now so they last for a long long time uh, the, la and I, the last one I had was about 10 years old before it finally bit the dust. So the one thing that I do with this eraser is when it starts to get really dirty with anything on it, I'll go ahead and I'll use a piece of paper and I simply clean it off just like you would a regular eraser. That way I have no chance to transfer anything on the eraser to the quilt fabric. Okay, so now you see how to do the refills. So I have marked with the wide bone, which is pure chalk. And now what I do is I like to use one of these lint removers, but you can use just a piece of muslin and I simply wipe it away and it comes right away. It'll leave just a little bit of residue if you mark it really hard and you simply use just a damp cloth and you would get rid of that. Most of the time, this gets rid of it. I, I've never had issues with this. Now, if I want to use the thin, which is the wax base, I'm going to push that up in there. You don't want it too long because otherwise it'll keep breaking the tip uh, because it is thin wax base. I would go ahead and again, I don't know if you can see that, but it's a nice, thin, sharp line. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that come up let me go over that just one more time and again this has a little bit of a wax base to it because it is you need to because this is so thin it's it's got to have some strength so it doesn't constantly keep breaking now to get rid of this after I mark that then simply I just go ahead and I use my eraser and I get rid of it and then I simply brush it off but I have to be honest, usually I find that this works perfect for both of them. But I love having my eraser to get rid of um, any of the residue that's left on there, especially for client quilts. So those are the two products that I use for um, marking anything that has any color on them. Okay, one thing I want to cover real quick is our pounce chalk for stencils. Now, a lot of people don't use stencils for a couple of reasons. Number one, they get frustrated with the chalk because once you pounce something and you start quilting, then the chalk will bounce away. The one thing I will say is for years, I've tried all of the different pounce chalks out there. And the one that I like the absolute least would be anything that has to be steamed out. I don't want to get steam anywhere near my client's quilt. I like a nice, regular, ground chalk. So these are the chalks that we carry. We carry the white, which is of course the one that I use most of the time. And then we carry a barely blue. So they've made a lighter blue pounce chalk um, that I like. And of course they come in the refills as well. And of course the pounce itself is just like a school eraser. So it looks just like that. And what you do is you would open up the little lid here, little cap, and you're gonna use the pounce chalk itself, and you're gonna put it in here, and then you're gonna reclose it, and then what I do is you hit it, hit it, hit it, while it works the pounce chalk into the foam section here. And then, of course, it is ready to pounce. And then when you're done with it, of course, it has its little cover that will go back on it. Now, 
It's the same for the uh, Barely Blue. But let me say this, the white, I use the white for color, obviously. And then the Barely Blue, I would use on white. But what I like to do is when I get my Barely Blue, I like to dilute um, three parts of white to one part of the blue because I want my blue to be very light that way I know I'm not going to run into any trouble when I try to wipe that chalk away um, and I found with the older blues they were really strong blues and every once in a while depending on the sizing or chemicals in the fabric I could run into trouble so just keep that in mind again I like one part blue to three parts of white now when I actually use the pounce on a stencil, I would lay my stencil down. Let's say I were going to try to find the center and divide a space, um, not using one of my rulers, instead using this wonderful um, stencil from Pam Clark, Designs with Lines. This was her um, original method that was just so wonderful. Pam is just a genius. I, I loved everything that she did. So now, what I do is I would use my white chalk and with it laying down, I would boom, 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 pounce it just like that. The chalk would be there. And before I would go and lift this, what I would do is I always keep in my studio just cheap dollar store aerosol hairspray. And I would simply do just a quick little psst right over it. I did not say psst, don't douse it. It's just a quick psst. And what will happen is when you lift up the stencil, that's going to leave that there and it's not going to bounce away until you have that quilted. And then once you've quilted that, then you just simply take a cloth and you wipe it away. And I use one of the microfiber cloths and I've never had an issue. I've I use so little of the hairspray on top of there that it's not going to stain the fabric. It's sitting on the surface of the chalk itself. And then once I finish using this throughout the quilt, if I were going to use it multiple times, then I just take it over and I rinse it in water, which is why I love these wonderful um, plastic stencils because you can rinse them and clean them and they're just as good as new. So that is how I use the pounce chalk. Well, there we have it. That is the information that I like to share about marking tools, again, because it's very important that you trust your marking tools and that you actually utilize marking tools and don't remain afraid of them. You know, a few things that I told you that I wanted to talk about are some of the... Um, Tools that I don't like to use for marking. Number one, I don't like to use any type of graphite-based product because number one, graphite tends to eat cotton over time. And so a lot of our folks, just like I had mentioned earlier, do not tend to wash their quilts a lot. They'll set in closets and wait to be passed on to children or passed on to friends as gifts. And so again, we want to take these things into account when we're using marking tools. The other tool that I know a lot of people promote that I don't promote are the air erase type tools. Because the one thing is this that you want to think about. Air erase is wonderful in theory, but it is an ink product. And there's no such thing as magic. And so frankly, when you use a product that says it's magical and it's going to just go away, we can run into trouble. I actually have quilts that I did um, 15, 16, 17, 18 years ago that I look at and I used to use some of these airy race magical type pens and the lines have come back black or sepia. So I just prefer, if it sounds too good to be true, I kind of just feel, yeah, it's too good to be true. So hopefully that helps educate us a little bit on the marking tools. And no matter what you choose to mark with, stay safe, take care of yourself, and take care of each other. We'll see you down the road.